Welcome to the Blue Mouse Knits. Today I'm going to walk you through how to make this really beautiful, timeless baby blanket which could be an heirloom for generations to come. Here's what you can expect from this video. I will walk you through a quick introduction about materials and sizing and abbreviations and gauge. And then I will walk you through every step of this pattern. It's broken up into basically three sections. Now I don't have the blanket in my possession right now. I've already gifted it to a friend. So these photos will have to do in the meantime. This pattern is a little bit unique. It's knit on the bias, which means it's kind of knit diagonally almost from corner to corner instead of from bottom to top. This pattern creates a perfect square. You work it in essentially three sections. So you start at the cast on and that is one corner and you work all the way up to the middle. Then you work a little bit of a middle section and then you start decreasing to the top. However many increases you do, you will do the exact same thing for decreases and it will give you a perfect square. The other great thing about this pattern is it can be knit with any yarn, any needles, and any gauge. This is perfect for when you're feeling lazy and you don't wanna to have to do a gauge swatch, which I feel that way all the time. Uh, if you're in that mood, this is a great pattern for that because you can kinda of just start going and stop when you reach a point where you're like, this is half as big as I want my blanket to be. And then you start decreasing. It's a really simple pattern once you get the hang of it. It involves sections of twisted rib and garter. I think the skill level can start at an advanced beginner. The hardest part is gonna be the twisted rib. If you don't know the difference between a knit and a purl stitch, I think this pattern is going to be a little bit too challenging for you. I would say go practice a rib stitch or a seed stitch first, and then maybe come back here. But I will walk you through every step of this pattern. So like I said, you can use any yarn and any needles that you like. The sample is knit with I Love This Cotton which is a worsted or medium weight, and it is a 100% cotton yarn, and it is knit in the color parchment. But like I said, you can use any yarn that you like. If you don't know where to start, if you're not sure what needle size to use, you can go to the back of your ball of yarn. It'll have a crisscross of knitting needles, and it'll say what size. For this, it recommends a US 8, which is a five millimeter. Now it also gives you a gauge of 18 stitches and 23 rows. That is just a guideline. Not everybody is gonna end up with that gauge, but for this pattern, gauge doesn't really matter. If you're unsure of what needle size to pair with your yarn, I recommend making just a tiny, tiny little swatch. It doesn't have to be super legit. But what you wanna do is just knit a little bit. You wanna figure out if you like the feel of the fabric. So if I knit up a little bit and the feeling is a little bit too rigid, then you wanna go up a needle size. Or if it's feeling like it's gonna stretch out a ton, go down a needle size or two. If you like the drape of it, if it you know falls over really well, then that is a good needle size to pair with your yarn. So like this is you know floppy enough that it's going to have a nice feel to it, but it's not too stretched out. So I would go with something that gives you a nice texture and feel to it. Like I said, gauge is not important. So as long as you like the texture and the feel of your yarn and needle combo, you're good to go. It's kind of similar with yardage. There is no set yardage for this pattern because everybody's project will take a different amount of yarn. So what I suggest if you're unsure, if you have a set amount of yarn, you can weigh up your total amount of yarn. I would take the ball bands off if you're gonna do that though. Uh, weigh up your total amount of yarn and then just kind of keep track a little bit as you're going. You're going to increase until you reach kind of a midpoint. You wanna use a little bit less than half of your total yarn by the time you reach the middle. Because each half is exactly the same size as the other, if you use slightly less than half of your yarn, you should be good. When it comes to needles, you can use any size that goes well with your yarn, but I would recommend circular needles. And I recommend that because you're going to have a lot of stitches on your needles, and it will get really bunched up if you're doing it on normal straights or even um, long straights. So. It's up to you if you feel like you can fit it in really long straight needles, go for it. It's just my recommendation that you use circular needles even though you are knitting flat. And that's pretty much it for the introduction of this pattern. I just wanna say very quickly that this video is not sponsored, but if you would like to support the channel and support the work that I do, you can find all of the links for my knitting patterns on Etsy and Ravelry below, or you could support by watching a couple more videos and liking and subscribing. Any of those options are really appreciated, so thank you so much. Now onto the pattern. So this pattern creates a perfect square. So for the first half, you're going to work sections of garter as well as sections of twisted rib. 
and you're going to increase until you reach the desired width of your project and then you'll start decreasing. So to begin, we're going to cast on seven stitches. You can do this any way that you see fit. I'm going to do a long tail cast on. So after we cast on seven stitches, we're going to knit four rows plain. So this is very simple. I'm just going to knit across for four rows. So we're going to work section A first, which is garter, and it is a two row section. For row one, we're going to knit three. And then yarn over. So bring the yarn around the right needle from front to back and then knit to the last three. Since this is our first row, we won't have very many stitches in between our increases. So we knit one and then we have three stitches left. And then we yarn over again. So bring the yarn around the right needle from front to back and knit the final three stitches. And we have just increased two stitches. So I have nine right now. So I can go ahead and turn my work. For row two, you're just going to knit across. And that's it. That's a repeat of section A. So section A is only two rows. That was one repeat. And I suggest that your number of repeats is even. I wouldn't choose 15 repeats because it's an odd number and creates 30 rows, but I would instead choose either 28 or 32 because when you divide that in two, you get an even number. So something that can also make this easier is to add a couple of stitch markers to separate the three stitches at the beginning and end of each row. So if you find it easier, you can add markers, but you don't have to. So I'll show you one more repeat of section A. We're going to knit three. And you can place a marker here if you like. And now we're going to work a yarn over. So bring the yarn from front to back around the right needle. And then you knit until you have three stitches left. And then we yarn over again. So bring the yarn around the right needle from front to back. And I'm also going to place a stitch marker. And then we knit the final three. Again, the stitch markers are totally optional, but that is a row one repeat. So we've increased two stitches. So now we can turn our work and work row two. And for row two, we're just going to knit across. And if you have stitch markers, you can just slip them as you come to them. That was a couple repeats of section A. So again, go ahead and work those rows as many times as you want, but I recommend an even number of repeats. So I'm going to work six repeats, which creates 12 rows, and I'll meet you back here for section B. So this is what my finished section A looks like. I only did six repeats, so 12 rows. So it's not a very large section. You could definitely do more if you want, but you'll notice that we have a bunch of holes here from our increases and it creates kind of a triangle in the middle. So now it's time for section B. You might find it helpful from here on out to have a stitch marker on your right side rows. So odd numbered rows of our sections are right side rows. So right now I have a row one facing me for section B. So I'm just going to place a stitch marker just to kind of help keep track of the rows I've worked. So now we're on to our twisted rib. It's a four row repeat. So row one, we're going to knit three, yarn over, purl one through the back loop, followed by a repeat of a knit one through the back loop, purl one through the back loop until there are three stitches left, and then we'll work a yarn over, knit three. So your markers can stay in the same place because you're still going to have the garter edging, but the middle in between the markers will be twisted rib. To begin, we're going to knit three stitches. And then if you have a marker, you can slip it. And now we're going to yarn over. So you can yarn over from front to back. And I'm just going to hold on to that with my right hand. And we're going to bring our yarn in between our needles to the front. And now we're going to work a purl one through the back loop. So a normal purl one is worked by going into the front loop of this stitch from right to left. But instead, we're going to get the back loop of the stitch. So I'm holding on to the yarn over and I'm just going to demonstrate it. So here is the stitch. This is the front side, right? And this is the back side. So we're going to catch the back loop of it and kind of go towards us. Okay, so here's the whole stitch. The front loop over here and the back loop over here. I'm just going to bring my needle and catch the back loop. Okay, 
that looks like this from the front. My yarn over is still on my right hand needle. And now I can yarn over from front to back, pull a loop through, and then slide that stitch off my left hand needle. And now I can bring my yarn in between my needles to the back. And we're going to work a repeat of a knit one through the back loop and then a purl one through the back loop until we have three stitches left. So a knit one through the back loop is very similar. A normal knit stitch is worked from front to back like this in the front loop of the stitch. But because we're working in the back loop, if we look at our stitch from the side. This is the front loop here. And this is the back loop here. We're going to go into the back loop like this. So from the front, you don't really see the needle, but from the back, you do. And then we just grab our yarn, yarn over from front to back, and pull a loop through, and then slide that stitch off your needle. And then we work another purl one through the back loop. So bring your yarn in between your needles to the front. And again, we don't go into the front like this. Instead, you can kind of go behind the stitch and catch the back loop from back to front. So going towards you like that. And then yarn over, pull a loop through, slide that stitch off your needle. And that's it. You just repeat that knit one through the back loop followed by purl one through the back loop until you have only three stitches left. So now we have only three stitches left and I'm going to work a yarn over. So bring the yarn around the right needle from front to back. And then if you have a marker, you can slip it and knit the final three stitches. For row two, we're going to work essentially the same thing, but with no increases. So go ahead and knit the first three stitches. And now we're going to work a purl one. So bring the yarn in between the needles to the front of the work. Go into the next stitch from right to left, which is the yarn over from the previous row. Yarn over from front to back, pull a loop through and slide off. And then you can bring your yarn in between your needles to the back of the work and work a repeat of a knit one through the back loop followed by a purl one through the back loop until you have five stitches left. Knit one through the back loop. Followed by a purl one through the back loop until you have five stitches left. So now we're down to five stitches and you work one final, knit one through the back loop, bring your yarn around to the front and work a regular purl stitch. And that's into the yarn over from the last row. And then if you have a marker, you can slip it and knit the last three stitches. And there you have it, that is row two. So you can turn your work and for row three, another increase row, and the removable stitch marker always indicates that we're on an increased side. So start with a knit three. Slip the marker if you have it and then work a yarn over. So bring the yarn around the right needle from front to back. And then we're going to work a repeat of a knit one through the back loop followed by a purl one through the back loop until you have four stitches left. So we know how to do this. Go ahead and do that until you have four stitches left. Once you have four stitches left, you're going to work one final knit one through the back loop and then another yarn over. So bring the yarn around the right needle from front to back, slip the marker if you have one and knit the last three stitches. And then you can turn your work for rows two and four. When you're working the yarn over from the previous row, you never knit or purl them through the back loop. You always knit or purl them normally. And then the next row after that is when you can start working them into your twisted rib. So to begin, we knit four. So we knit our first three, slip the marker, and then knit the yarn over from the last row. So after we work our knit four, it's time to purl one through the back loop. And now you can get into your repeat of a knit one through the back loop followed by a purl one through the back loop until you have only four stitches left. And once you get down to the final four stitches, you're just going to knit four. So knit the yarn over from the last row, slip the marker, and knit the final three. And there you have it. That is how you work sections A and B of this baby blanket. So you're just going to repeat sections A and B until your blanket is about half as large as you want it to be. So it's going to be a perfect square. So once you've knit as many sections of A and B as you want, 
it's time to work the middle. And the middle is where we transition from increasing to decreasing. To begin the middle, you're going to begin working section A again, but you're gonna work half as many rows as you would normally do for that section. So for example, I knit 12 rows in total for section A, which is six repeats of rows one and two, but 12 rows in total. So for this middle section, I need to do half of that. So I'm going to work six rows of garter while maintaining my increases. So you work it just like section A, but just for half as many rows. So for me, that's six rows. And then once you do that, it's time to transition into decreasing. This is why section A needed an even number of rows and an even number of repeats, because once you cut in half, you need to be able to do half as many here. For the other half of your garter rows, you're going to follow these next two rows. So row one is a knit two, SSK, yarn over, SSK, knit to the last six, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, knit two. This looks confusing because you've got two decreases instead of just one, but we do that because we're still yarning over to create this kind of eyelet edge here. We need to still yarn over. If we stopped yarning over, this would just be closed and it wouldn't match. So we need to yarn over, but the yarn over is an increase. So if we're increasing still, then we need to do a double decrease on each half. So hopefully that makes sense. To begin, you're going to knit two, and now we need to work an SSK. So I work it slightly modified. So we're going to slip one as if to knit, and then slip one as if to purl, and then we're going to work an SSK. So go into the next stitch into the front loop of it as if to knit it, but just slip it to your right hand needle. And then if you have a marker, you can remove it. And then you go into the next stitch as if to purl. So go into it from right to left into the front loop and just slip it. And now we go into the front loops of both of these next two stitches from left to right like this. So your left needle should be on top of your right needle. And then we're going to yarn over the right needle from front to back and pull one loop through those two, and then you can remove those two stitches. So that is an SSK, and now we need to work a yarn over from front to back, and then we work another SSK. So slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to purl, into the front loops of both, from left to right, yarn over, pull a loop through, and slide those two off. And now you can just keep knitting until you have six stitches left, so for the final six stitches, you're going to work a knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, knit two. So for a knit two together, you're going to go into the next two stitches from left to right as if to knit them, just into the front loops. So your left needle is on top of your right needle, yarn over, pull a loop through and slide off. And now we work a yarn over. And now we work a knit two together again. And now we can work our final knit two. So that's row one of your decrease section in the middle. And then for row two, you're just gonna knit across. And then you repeat rows one and two to complete your section A or your garter section. So my first half was six rows or three repeats. And my final half is going to be six rows or three repeats. So I'm going to work these two rows that are on screen three times for a total of six rows. So my middle garter section will match all of the previous garter sections before it. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for your decrease section. And our sections are flipped. So we're going to now work our twisted rib first and then our garter. I'm back on a right side row. We've increased up to this point. This was our middle and now we're starting to decrease. So now we're going to work our twisted rib decrease section. And it is again a four row repeat. So we're going to work a knit two. And then we're going to work an SSK. So remember you slip as if to knit, slip as if to purl, into the front loops, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And then we yarn over and we do that one more time where we SSK. And now we're going to purl one through the back loop. So I'm not really gonna demonstrate this because you've done it all the way up to this point, but you purl one through the back loop and then you knit one through the back loop. And you do that until you have seven stitches left. So once you get down to your final seven stitches, you're going to work one more purl through the back loop, and then you're going to work a knit two together. So go into the next two stitches at the same time as if to knit, knit them together, yarn over, work another knit two together, and then knit two. And go ahead and turn your work. And for row two, we're going to work 
a knit four followed by a repeat of a purl one through the back loop, knit one through the back loop, the five stitches. So this is pretty standard. Just go ahead and work that all the way across and I'll meet you back here for your next decrease row, row three. Row number three, which is another decrease row. You're going to work a knit two, SSK, yarn over, SSK, knit one through the back loop, followed by a repeat of a purl one through the back loop, knit one through the back loop to six stitches, and then a knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, knit two. This is virtually the same thing that we just did. So work a knit two, and then an SSK, yarn over, SSK, and then work a knit one through the back loop, followed by a repeat of a pro one through the back loop, knit one through the back loop until you have six stitches left, and then you'll work a knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, knit two. Pretty much the same thing that we did for row one, just with one extra knit one through the back loop in between. So I'm not gonna walk you through this because it's pretty much the same thing and we're pretty familiar with it at this point. And then row four may look a bit odd because you have two purl one through the back loops right next to each other, but that is just because we're decreasing. So sometimes you're gonna have two of the same stitches next to each other, but this is the repeat for the twisted rib decrease section. So go ahead and work all of those for the same amount of repeats and the same amount of rows that you did for section B. So these will match up. So for me, I did two repeats of the four rows for a total of eight rows in section B. So I'm going to do the same amount here. And then we move on to section D, which is the decrease garter section. These rows are worked exactly the same as our middle decrease rows. So I'm not gonna go over it because the steps are the same. So you can just go ahead and rewind to that point to watch it. But these are the two rows written on screen. And then you just repeat sections C and D. So a twisted rib followed by a garter section for the same amount of times that you did in the increase section. So for me, I did seven total repeats of section A and B. So I'm going to do seven total repeats of section C and D. So you work sections C and D as many times as you did for sections A and B. At the end, you should have 11 stitches in total left. And it's time for our final decrease section. So go ahead and work your decrease sections until you get to that point and I will meet you back here. The file I did when I was working this blanket got lost, so I'm working from a swatch, but the process is the same. I have 11 stitches left and I just finished a decrease row in section D. So a row one, which is a right side row. So now I'm going to turn my work and work a wrong side row. So just a plain knit row. There we have it, turn my work again. And now, we're going on to our final section. So I have 11 stitches left and we're going to work our final section, which is our last decrease garter strip. So for row one, which is a right side row, we're going to work a knit two, SSK, yarn over, center double decrease, yarn over, knit two together, knit two. We're going to knit two, work an SSK, which we know how to do, work a yarn over. Now we're going to work a center double decrease. So we're going to slip the next two stitches as if to knit at the same time. You're going to go into the next two stitches as if you were working a knit two together. So like this, but just slip them to your right hand needle. Now you're going to knit the next stitch. And now you're going to pass those two slip stitches over that knit stitch and off. So go into those slip stitches from left to right slide down to the end and hold on to that knit stitch and pass them over and off. And now we're going to work another yarn over and a knit two together and knit two. And now you should have nine stitches. Go ahead and turn your work. And for row two, which is a wrong side row, we're going to knit across normally. And for row three, we're going to work a knit two, SSK, knit one, knit two together, knit two. So knit two, SSK, knit one, knit two together, and knit two. And now you should have seven stitches. Turn your work. For row four, which is a wrong side row, you're, you're going to knit across normally. And for row five, which is a right side row, you're going to work the same thing where you just knit across plain. And then you're going to bind off on the wrong side 
and the sample uses a standard knit bind off. So to work this, I'm going to knit two. I'm going to pull that first knit stitch over the second and off. So go into it with my left hand needle from left to right, hold on to that second knit stitch with my index finger, pull the first over the second and off. Knit one, pull the first over the second and off. And that's it, you just do that all the way across. When you have only one stitch left, you can kind of pull out that loop, cut a tail that's about 10 or 12 inches long. And you can either bring the tail through that last stitch or just entirely pull out that last stitch. This is what it should look like. So there you have it. Again, this is just a swatch because the file got lost, but this is what the end of your baby blanket should look like. And at this stage, you can go ahead and weave in your ends, wash and block your blanket, and you're all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this pattern. You can find the free download on Ravelry or get it for a dollar on Etsy. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful or enjoyable, please consider giving the video a like. It really helps the channel out and it helps support what I do here so that I can create more tutorials for you in the future. You can find more of my free patterns here and there are links to my Etsy and Ravelry shops below. Thank you guys so much.